Hey there and welcome back to Northwest Craftsman. If you have been watching any woodworking channels for any amount of time or you've been to a woodworking shop, you've probably noticed that on almost everybody's dust collectors there are cyclones. You might be asking yourself, why would you put a cyclone or why would you put this thing before your actual filter bag? Today we're going to talk about why a cyclone works the way that it does and kind of dig into the physics behind it so that you know why they're so popular and why they're such an incredible thing to have on your dust collector. All right, let's get started. So if any of you guys live in the Midwest, you might know a tornado by the name of a cyclone, um, or other parts of the world sometimes call tornadoes cyclones, or I believe even hurricanes in some part of the world are called cyclones. And you can get the idea, this is doing the exact same thing that a tornado or a hurricane is doing by spinning around on the inside of here. But it's almost all almost all uh, cyclones are going to be some sort of conical or semicircular shape that's going to allow the air to spin around. Now when you're looking real closely at the inside of the cyclone you're going to notice there's three primary inlet slash outlets or three primary openings. You've got your inlet here, you've got your air out here, and you've got your debris out here. So when you're setting this up, you can see the air out um, comes in just a little bit further down to about right here. But what happens is when you suck out of this up here, you're going to cause a low pressure system on this entire setup. So this entire canister is going to go to low pressure, which causes the only way for air to come into the system or which only allows air to come into the system through this guy right here. Well, if you're looking at this, You'll notice the way that it's molded into this cyclone is it comes right into the edge and so this airstream hits the cone tangent to its face or uh, yeah tangent to its face. Now everything that's in that airstream has a different mass to it. But one of the things that you'll notice is just like when you're in your car and you go around a corner really fast, the dust and debris has nowhere to go except to follow the cyclone all the way around. So from the top it'll come in over here and it can only go around. But because of the inertia of all the particles that are in there, it traps itself up against the wall and they can't come off. If you've ever been to a fair and you've ridden one of those like ruby rides which spins around in circles, I'll flash an image of one up here. But if you've ever been in one of these rides, you know that you get stuck to the wall because of the centripetal force as you're coming around. And actually, just to get kind of technical for a second, so a centrifugal force is an imaginary force that you feel pushing yourself towards the outside. The centripetal force is the restoring force on the back. So in this particular situation, the dust feels a centrifugal force pushing it to the outside of the cone, but it is the centripetal force supplied by the cone that keeps it on there. It's just the force balances that's coming around to keep it on the plane right here so that as it comes around it goes there. But because of the cone shape what will happen is it comes down the radius reduces which keeps the force pretty consistent on the particles and because the airstream is pulling from down here you're not going to get entrainment that's going to bring it straight up. That's also why if you overload your cyclone you can get dust and debris that comes up because you pile it up on the inside of your cyclone and it allows it to get caught in the airstream coming up. But for the most part, what's gonna happen is your dust and debris comes all the way down here, drops into the bottom, and then clean air comes out the top. So maybe it's just me as an engineer kind of geeking out, but I think cyclones are super cool. The physics behind them is really cool. The engineering that goes into them is really cool. Um, but from a purely practical standpoint, they are super useful in the shop for filtering out a massive amount or a large percentage of the debris before it ever gets to a physical filter, which extends the life and reduces the amount of work, uh, extends the life of the filters and reduces the amount of work that you need to do in the shop. Um, yeah, I think they're super cool. If you guys have any more in-depth questions about what a cyclone is used for, how a cyclone works, or anything about my dust collection system, go ahead and leave it in the comment section down below. If you guys like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you like the kind of content that we're producing here on Northwest Craftsman, I would love it if you guys subscribed. We're starting to build a small community here, and I'd love for it to be a bigger community because I absolutely love interacting with all of you guys on a regular basis. And uh, when you do subscribe, go ahead and hit the bell notification or the bell icon to get a notification when a new episode episode is released. All right. Thank you guys very much for joining. I appreciate it. I will see you on the next episode. Have a great one. Bye.